chapter 13.4 goes over biotechnology, how organisms are made in a lab to be altered uh, for useful purposes and how it relates back to DNA and restructuring that DNA to make the organism useful. When we are understanding DNA structure and biotechnology, it goes back to the importance of DNA and complementary base pairing. Nucleic acid hybridization is the base pairing of one strand of DNA to a complementary sequence. So always having the base pairing is the basis for genetic engineering. Genetic engineering being the process of directly manipulating those genes or the genome. So manipulating the sequence, the A's, the T's, and the C's, and the G's. Biotechnology is the process of manipulating the organism and their components for the purpose of making something useful. For example, making bacteria um, more likely to eat waste in a lake is helpful uh, in terms of pollution. Modifying crops to be resistant to different pests, that would be something useful as well. Before we get to the details of genetic engineering using biotechnology, we need to understand a little bit of the terminology. One term that you need to know is gene cloning. So this is the process by which scientists are going to produce multiple copies of segments of DNA that they are going to work with in the lab. Now, it's important to note that the genome in genes and DNA, they're extremely long. So not all the DNA need to get copied and studied. A lot of the DNA in our nucleus is non-coding, non-coding for a protein, for protein synthesis. So only the parts that are coding need to be copied and worked with, depending on what the scientist is trying to look at. Now, how um, is that done? So scientists use bacteria and they use something within the bacteria cell known as a plasmid. A plasmid is a small circular DNA molecule and they replicate separately from the typical bacteria DNA. So these plasmids, this small DNA, are going to be utilized in um, biotechnology and genetic engineering, which I'll get into a little bit more in a few minutes. Now, the DNA that is going to be artificially made using plasmids and using another organism DNA is called recombinant DNA. So again, recombinant DNA is the plasmid with a, another piece of DNA often um, from another organism. How is that DNA of interest cut and merged together with the plasmid of a bacteria cell to be studied by scientists? So the way that DNA is cut is by the use of restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases. This cuts the strands of DNA at specific locations, which is known as a restriction site. So this is going to be the place where the scientists want to study, a place that has coding DNA. Now, once it's cut, there's going to be fragments, and these are called restriction fragments. And they have one kind of loose single stranded end and I'll show you in a picture in one of the upcoming slides what exactly that looks like but it's known as a having a sticky end uh, kind of like a tail a little bit the other another uh, enzyme that is really important in kind of rearranging the DNA to be studied 
is DNA ligase, which we've seen before. And it still does the same job as it did before. It's going to be what joins the DNA fragments back together. Here is a picture summarizing genetic engineering using a bacteria cell. So in the upper left-hand corner, corner, you have a bacteria. You can see the normal DNA and then the plasmid, which is going to be used in this process, which again is a simple piece of DNA. So geneticists or scientists insert a gene of interest from another organism into that plasmid. Now the gene of interest is going to be a gene that is going to code for a certain protein and it has to be a coding piece of DNA. And as a reminder, a lot of the DNA is non-coding so it's not used, thus it's not inserted into that plasmid. And the plasmid is the green circle in the middle. The black piece is going to be the gene of interest. Um, maybe using uh, a human gene into that bacteria cell. Now, once it's inserted into the bacteria cell, the bacteria cell at this point is known as a cloning vector. So it's going to be cloning itself as bacteria does through binary fission. So the bacteria cell replicates, replicates, replicates. When it replicates, it replicates and replicates the plasmid itself and replicates that gene of interest into its offspring. Once it has replicated, the cell is going to do what it does, and it does make protein. So when it makes these proteins, which are different, scientists can study how that gene of interest is going to make proteins or how it can make a different protein. This is a closer look at how recombinant DNA is made through genetic engineering. So up at the top, we have the plasmid with the gene of interest from another organism inserted into it. Um, the place where the interest is, is known as the restriction site. And it's going to be on the five prime to three prime end that we're gonna be looking at. So restriction enzymes are added to that plasmid and the restriction site and where, again, the gene of interest is. So it is cut. And now you can see, I inserted a red arrow. You can see from the five to the three prime, because that's the piece that we're going to be looking at, you can see kind of a, a tail known as the sticky end. So that's where we're going to be studying or where geneticists are studying. The DNA is going to seek out another DNA fragment. Uh, the base pairing has to take place. And then when it's all settled, basically, and put back together with DNA ligase, we can then study how that recombinant DNA is going to have transcription, translation, and ultimately what type of protein is it going to produce? Is it going to be beneficial for the organism? Is it going to harm the organism? Um, or is it going to be lethal altogether? So it's a little bit of a mystery and kind of figuring out uh, what pieces of gene are coding, uh, what restriction enzymes need to be used because every restriction enzyme cuts in different spots. And just studying it to see the outcome and how can it be or how can it serve a purpose for the organism or for other organisms. Here are a few examples of how genetic engineering can be useful in different organisms. So I think I already mentioned two of these, but is there a gene uh, for pest resistance 
that can be inserted into plants for different crops? Is there a gene that can be inserted into a different type of bacteria that are able to synthesize uh, the toxic waste or pollution in water? Um, is there another gene that can produce um, more protein to prevent blood clots in patients who have um, compromised hearts uh, for whether it's from a heart attack, um, in dealing with strokes, uh, having a protein to dissolve those clots can be very helpful and life-saving in people. And then for basic everyday life, uh, is there a protein that can help uh, with the human growth hormone for people who have stunted growth and making them um, essentially average height when they are not?